some of the atoms on the periodic table were predictable. Like you could say sodium, if it's an ion, is almost always going to be sodium plus one. And like chloride, the chloride ion is almost always uh, minus one. Now, I was talking about the D block, the, the transition metals in the middle. They could do some weird things. For instance, iron can either be two plus or three plus. Copper can be plus one or plus two. Uh, manganese uh, is usually always plus two. Chromium is usually always plus three. Zinc plus two. Silver plus one. But again, it's still it's there's no real rhyme or reason to why. Well, there is, but that's that's beyond the scope of what we're trying to do. So there's no real easy to remember way of you know what which which ones have which number. So when it comes to naming these guys especially guys like copper and iron, since they could have different uh, charges on them, then we have to name them differently so we know that we're talking about the right ones. So, for instance, let's say we had this ion, the iron 2 plus, and let's say we put that with the chloride ion. We know the chloride ion is minus one. Okay, well I'm looking at this. I want to write a formula for it and come up with a name. So the first thing with writing a formula, I say, okay, these are different charges. So I'm going to put this one there and this one there. And I get Fe, well that's one, and Cl2. Okay. So now what's the name of this guy? And that's where it gets tricky because since iron can have more than one uh, type of ion, we have, to, we have to show which one it is. And it's pretty simple on how we do that. So before, we just said the normal name of the cation. The cation comes first, and we're gonna do that again. We're gonna say this is just iron. But now, we have to show which one it is. Is it iron 2 plus or iron 3 plus? And since this came from the 2 plus, I'm gonna put Roman numeral 2 here. And then, just as normal, just as we did before, I'm gonna put the name of the anion, which is chloride. So, this is iron 2 chloride. That's how, that's how you would say it. So what would the formula be for, let's say, iron 3 oxide? Well, we have to write out our ions first. So we know it's iron 3 because it was explicit, it's right there, iron 3. So that's iron with a plus 3 charge, or 3 plus. And oxide is one of those ones that's predictable. It's in the, the second to last row, or what, it, what is it, uh, 6A, it's in row 6A, so it has almost always a charge of 2 minus. Okay, so we're halfway there. Now I say, okay, well these are different charges. Since they're different, I could just do this. And now I have E2 O3. And that's iron three oxide. So what would iron three chloride be? Well, we'd have iron three, iron three plus, and then the chloride ion, just like we did up here. And now this time when we switch them, now we have iron with a one, Cl comes in with a three. So as you can see, these are, these are two completely different compounds, right? And that's what the, these numbers are for. They help you to tell the difference between one kind and another kind. So if you were given, let's say, 
F E O. Okay. We know it's an iron oxide of some kind, but which iron was it? Well, we'd have to break it into two separate parts. You say, okay, well, it was, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So we have the iron with the unknown charge because iron might have, you know, it could either be two or three. And then the oxide, oxide is one of those predictable ones. So we could say, okay, that's almost always two minus. So what number must have been there to give us a one-to-one -one ratio? Well, that's pretty much a no-brainer. It's going to have to be 2, 2 plus. Because if we put a 3 in there, well, we would have ended up with this right here. So that's how we deal with the transition metals. And usually um, these, like zinc, silver, uh, manganese, uh, no, I'm sorry, I take that back. Manganese you need to specify, and chromium too. You need a, uh, the, the only ones that you really don't need to specify are zinc, silver, and I believe cadmium. Uh, but usually you're, whenever you do this, you're going to have a chart with all of these different names on it. So the only, the only difference is, or the only uh, tough part is going to be if you're given something like this and then finding the name for it. Is that iron 3 oxide or iron 2 oxide? And uh, we'll do some we'll do some examples with that.